I'm Ray the Video Guy and over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to share with you a software that will allow you to edit videos and do screen capture all in one tool. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, I'm Ray the Video Guy. His YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, I'm Ray the Video Guy. In order to do video marketing, we all need to have a video editing program that will allow us to take the videos that we create and cut them down into something usable. We also need to have a screen capture tool so that we can do demo videos and training videos of products and software that is on our computer screen. Well, today I'm going to share with you a program that does both of those things in one go. The product is called ScreenFlow. Now, first, before we get started, you need to understand this is a Mac-only product, so PC guys, sorry you're out on this one, but there is Camtasia that will help you to do very similar things. Now, this program has been around for quite a while. We're on version 8 at this point in time, and I use this program pretty much on a daily basis to do all sorts of training videos. There's lots of great tools inside, and I want to share with you all the different resources that you have inside this program right now. Okay, so I want to do just a quick overview of ScreenFlow. If you need more details on how to edit with ScreenFlow or how to do screen capture, we do have other videos that will show you more in detail the different things that ScreenFlow can do. But basically, ScreenFlow is two products in one. One, it's a tool for capturing your screen so you can make screen recordings of websites and software so that you can do trainings and demos. And it's also a traditional video editing tool that will allow you to do all sorts of really fun editing. So let's take a look at the screen flow layout. So the first thing you'll see here is your canvas. This is where all of your video will be shown as you create your new project. To the right hand side, you'll see your media as well as all of your individual video effects, audio effects, and other tools for creating screen captures. Down below this, you'll see the timeline, which is where your video is going to be. And above that, you'll see information such as your play, your time, and your meters for your audio. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is how to do video editing. So if you're going to do traditional video editing, you're going to select your video here. And you're going to be able to do things like change the ending of your video to edit it down, as well as the beginnings. Here you can also choose the menu here to add starting and ending effects as well as retime the video and do a few other things as well. You're also going to be able to access all of your tools up in the upper right hand corner. So in this case here, our video editing tools allow us to scale the video, allows us to change the opacity. We can do things like cropping, just like so. You can also add reflections, which you can see on the bottom there. You can also change the roundness of it, which is really hard to see on this particular one there. You can add a drop shadow, which you're not really going to see here as well. That's going to be difficult because of the black background, but you can add shadows to items that you choose. Down here, you can choose your color controls. This will allow you to increase the saturation, change the brightness, as well as change the contrast. You can also do it by the number tools here. So if we want to put it back, we can just put 100. And that's going to bring it right back to where it was. Down below this, you have your video filters. So you can see here, I've done a green screen filter by using the chroma key tool. And of course, we can make adjustments to that just like with any other tool here until you get the perfect green screen that you want. You can also add other filters by clicking the button here. And now you'll have distortion effects. You've got video effects, such as a saliency map filter. You've got color adjustments here where you can change the depth of, to disparity. You can change the exposure, you can change the gamma, the hue. Down here, you've got color effects. We can invert colors, which is a nice, easy one to see here. You can see it gives it that negative look. You've also got things like posterizing, dithering, false color, and a whole bunch more. Down here, you've got blur effects, where you can add a blur to the image. So if we chose Gaussian blur, you'll see that it blurs the image there. And again, you can turn any of these off by clicking the button here or by deleting them by clicking the X. You've also got built-in filters here, like a spot color, and you've got stylized filters, so you can add things like a comic effect, crystallized, depth of field, etc. So clicking on one of these, the comic effect gives it that comic book look. And of course, if you're going to do the chroma key, it's at the very top. 
You can also adjust your audio by clicking the audio button here and adjusting the volume. You can also mute that particular track and you can add ducking. Ducking allows you to bring a track down, for instance, a piece of music when some other sound is on the screen. So when somebody's speaking, you can have the music automatically go down by turning on the ducking effect. Down below this, you can adjust your audio mix. You've got your output meters here, just like you do down here. You can also add effects such as a cathedral, a medium room, small room, large room, and it's just going to allow you to sound like you're in a different location. Presence is a very popular one. You can adjust the amount of filter that you have here. You can also remove background noises by turning on and off the button here. This will allow you to remove any hiss or any sort of static that's in the background of a particular piece of audio. And you can adjust the amount here. Down below this, just like with video, you have the audio filters. So you can come in here and you can do things like band passes and distortions, filter the audio, do EQs, high passes, low passes, change pitch, and all those other fun things you can do with audio. Now, once you're done with your video here, you can move into the screen capture area. This is where you're going to capture your video from your screen and you're going to come in and add effects to this. Now, this also allows you to do things like your video effects, just like you did with the traditional video. So you can come in here and you can rescale all of these. You can change the position, change the opacity. You can still crop just like so. You can add a reflection, which we won't see right there anyway, as well as change the colors and add filters. You can adjust your audio just like with a traditional piece of video here. But now you can get into some of the fun things like video motion. This will allow you to add new video effects to your video here. So you can add effects like a spring, gravity, or pulse to that particular piece of video so that the end screen can truly drive traffic exactly where just you want. Like so. And that just allows you to add animation and draw attention to something. You can adjust how often it's going to bounce. You can adjust the frequency, the amplitude, and you can choose whether to apply it to scale, position, or rotation. And what that means is with scale, we saw that it goes so that the up and down so like so. the end screen can truly drive track. And if you do the, the uh, position, now it's going Traffic to move exactly it around. where you want it. Now, unfortunately, unlike with rotation, many things, same thing, but this time it's going to rotate so that the end screen can truly just like so. So these effects can be added just by using this in here. And of course, you can change that to the different types of effects. The next thing that we have is we've got the screen recording tools here. This will allow you to show the mouse pointer, which you can see right here. And you can even adjust the pointer size. So this would be about normal right here, which is very, very small. But if we wanted to blow that up, we can make that bigger so people can see it. We can also add a click effect to this, like a radar or an invert. And what that means is when you clicked during your actual recording, the mouse here will show a radar effect that will spring off the end, or you can have it invert the color so it'll turn white with a black outline when you click. You can also change the opacity of the mouse here, and you can even add a sound. You can even change the sound by clicking here and choosing a different sound effect. But this will allow every time you clicked during your recording, it'll make a little click sound. Down below, you've got your keystrokes. This will allow you to show any keystrokes you made during your recording. So for instance, if you hit Command Z to go back during your recording, it will actually show that on the screen. You can change the width. You can change what it's attached to, as well as make any other modifications by changing any of the parameters here. Next, we have the callout feature. Now, the callout allows you to highlight certain areas of a video. So for instance, in this here, if we wanted to pay more attention to the video in the middle, we could come in and create a callout to draw attention directly to that. Now, by default, the callout shows where the mouse is by creating a highlighted area here. And you can adjust that just like so. You can also blur the background if you want, just like so. And you'll see that it adds a little bit of a blur to the background. And of course, we can turn that back off so it makes it nice and strong. You can also change the foreground window. Now, this case here, we only have one window. But if you had, for instance, a shot of a desktop with multiple windows, you could actually highlight specific windows in that shot. You can also do freehand, which is probably the one that I use the most. So we're going to come in here and we're going to highlight this area right here, which is the video. And you'll see when we do that, we can now make the rest of the background darker, okay? So that it really calls that out by making that darker. You can also add a blur 
to it if you need to blur something out. This is great if, for instance, on the screen, you've got some vital information that you don't want people to see, like an email or a phone number, you can blur that out and then you can turn the opacity down so that it looks normal except for that blur. You can also switch that to blur the background if you choose to. And then here, you can actually zoom up on that particular item so that it's bigger on the screen. This allows you to really draw attention to particular items. You can also add a border to this if you wanted to. You can add a shadow. So if we click that here, you'll see a shadow is added to that. You can also blur that shadow if you want by adding a feather. So we can add like a four to that. And you'll see it kind of blurs that area out there. And of course, at any time, you can bring this back or turn these off. You can also add a build to this. So this will allow you to animate the incoming video as it blows up. So we'll add, for instance, here, we'll put a 0.5 on the in, and we'll put a 0.5 on the out. And so now when we go back to that callout area and we hit play, we drive traffic exactly where you want it. Now, unfortunately, unlike with many things, you'll see that it fades it in and fades it out with a nice zoom feature there. Now the next thing that we have are the touch callouts. This is great if you recorded your iPhone or your or your uh, tablet because now you can add your finger touches to the actual video. And the way you do that is by hitting the action button here and you'll see it'll add a touch call right here to the timeline. Now you can add the number of touches. Now you can see this here is your touch. So this is supposed to represent your finger. So if you wanted to show a swipe right here, you would add this to show that you're swiping. Or maybe you, if you were clicking here, you would show this to show that you're clicking. Now you can come in here and you can adjust the size of this. You can adjust the color by coming in here and changing the color, just like so. You can adjust the opacity here so it's at 75, but if we wanted to have that at 55, we could do that to make it a little lighter. And then down here, you can do a call out that has an end state to it. Okay, so this is going to allow you to add an ease in and ease out, etc. You can also have it wait for a certain amount of time before it does this. And you can animate values for that end state by adjusting the size and the spacing here. This allows you to show as you touch and stop touching the particular part of the screen. You can also add multiples to this. So you can see right now we've got two because we called out that hand state there. But you can actually add two finger swipes by clicking the two or even three for some of the three finger swipes. And you'll see that they move together to show the swipe. The next thing that we have are our annotations. Now annotations allow you to add more information to a particular video, or you can also use this to block things out. So what you would do here is you would create a new annotation by hitting the plus button. This will add an annotation to the, to the actual video where you can come in now and you can do things like draw lines. And you can see here this line has an, a shadow as well as an outline, but you can turn those on and off right here. You can also change the endpoints from arrows to circles, or you can choose to not have an end on it at all and just have it be a flat end. You can add squares, just like so. You can add outline squares. So if you wanted to highlight a specific area, you could do that, as well as circles and even freeform lines, just like so. If at any time you want to get rid of your annotations, you can simply come in here and delete the entire pack of annotations. The next thing that we have is our text. Now our text allows us to put text right on the screen so everybody can read what we're talking about. Simply hit the plus button. This will add a text area to your timeline. And you can see we've got text right here. We've also got another piece of text that we created before. And if you want to get rid of that, again, just hit the delete button. With our new text, you can come in and you can make changes to this. You can also come in and you can make changes to things like your color as well as your font, just like so. Change the size. You can also change the color. So in case right here, our font is white. We can come in and we can make that another color. We can also choose whether it's solid, an image that fills it, or a gradient. So if we wanted to have a gradient, we can do that right there. Down below this, you can add an outline, as you can see there. And again, your outline can change color by choosing whatever color it is that you want for that particular outline, just like so. Down here, you can choose whether or not to have a backdrop around that text. So as you can see right now, it's got this 
kind of opaque black background, but we can turn that off by clicking this here. We can also change the roundness of it. So now we've got a more rounded look to it if we want. You can add a margin, just like so. And you can add an animation for build in or build out. So if we wanted to add a build in to this, we could come in here and we could choose a different type of build in. So in this case here, it's on move and we can hit the play button. It starts off in and you'll see it, it slides in from the left hand side. You can come in here and you can make changes to that. So it slides left, right, up, down, or from the corners and it starts off in just like so. You can also come down here and you can change the distance. So if you want it to come in from further away, you can do that or you can have it overlap. You can also change the ease in and ease out or have it spring. So if we hit spring here and we hit play, it starts off in, you see it kind of bounces in there instead of just landing. You can change the animation here to character flip. And you'll see that when you change some of these, that you'll have different effects that you can adjust on that. And again, you can test off any of in. these at any time. Starts off inside of Photoshop. Okay, so Just here like I so. am in. And at any time, if you want to turn this back off, simply click that button again. And for the build out, it's the exact same, but in reverse. Now the next area I want to show you is your media area. So this is where all of your video will show up either as you record it or as you bring it in. You can drag and drop media into here so that you can use it in your timeline. This will allow you to bring in video as well as audio and graphics. You also have the option to use your iTunes, GarageBand, and Photos directly from your computer. You can also put in a global library. This is where every single project will always have access to the same media. This is great if you've got songs that you use very often or a logo that you use very often as well, and you can just leave that in here. If you upgraded, you can also add built-in stock media, which will allow you to bring in audio and video as well as images directly from the ScreenFlow library. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the recording settings. So if you're going to do a new recording, you can hit the new button or you can hit command shift two. This will bring up this menu right here where you can see my voice with my microphone, but you can choose the screen that you want to use. In this case, I've got two screens to choose from. If you have an iPad or an iPhone attached to your computer, you can actually choose that here and record from that screen as well. You can record video by clicking this button here, and this will allow you to choose the camera that you want to go with, just like so, and add that recording to your video. Down below this, you can choose the microphone that you're using. So in this case here, I've got the option to use the built-in webcams, as well as the built-in iMac microphone, my mixer here, as well as Loopback and Mimo Live, which are from softwares that I have installed inside the computer. You can turn off your recording by clicking this button here, and you also have the option to record the computer's audio directly. So if you plan on showing things that play audio, you'll want to leave this turned on. Once you're done, all you have to do is hit the record button here. It'll give you a countdown and then you can start your recording. Well, there you go. That's ScreenFlow. As you can see, a great program that allows you to do all sorts of video editing, effects, add text, do all sorts of transitions and do all of your screen capture all within one simple to use tool. Now, if this sounds good to you, well, then we've got some good news. We have a great deal for you on ScreenFlow right now, where if you purchase the product, you're also going to get a whole bunch of extra goodies that we've put together so that you can make editing even more fun and more professional. If you want to be able to take advantage of all that, where we give you extra footage, we give you extra music, we give you extra graphics, well, then all you have to do is click the link down below this video and you'll be able to take advantage of that right away. If you have any questions, of course, please feel free to ask. Put your comments down below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe so that you can get all of our new videos and we'll see you in the next video.